And I mean, speaking of like community and because of all that, like since you've put out Husk and since you've put out these books, do you feel like your combo community has grown a little bit more? Do you feel like you have like resources when you're tabling or like more support at this point too? I I can definitely, yeah. I mean, um, as far as the convention scene, I've, I'm not like full steam ahead just yet. Mm-hmm. I've been to, uh, I think, two conventions last year. Um, and prior to that, I was erring on the side of caution. I was very much like, I'm going to hold off. Um, so 2022, I, I didn't come back to conventions at all. Um, but 2023, I was kind of like getting my feet wet again. Um, so, and those conventions were were fairly short. I was at like a, a one-day convention um, last year in June, mm-hmm. and it was like a Pride convention oh right and then i was also at la comic-con in december oh, right. cool. yeah and and so like even though it's only been two conventions and you know that's not a lot of uh time to really like build uh, in-person community here and there the connections that i have made the people that i have met mm-hmm. have been like they make the whole weekend worth it they yeah. make all all of the, the the effort so worth it um and that's what i find really special um that you know online um it's it's also like i i don't want to i don't want to like compare like in person versus online uh, Mm because i've met some really amazing people online as well but there really is that that like indescribable um just spark in with in person oh yeah um community where you know you're you're connecting with somebody and and they're right there in front of you and it's just it's just very special very amazing yeah like uh, we were kind of talking right before the show like i was stuck at a you know at a long convention all weekend and it's one of those things where it's like the hours are crazy um but it all kind of makes it worth it because the people that you're with you know you're all kind of yes. battling through it together you're all kind of comparing you know it's like when it's slow you're all just like damn it's slow right now like i hope i get like mm-hmm. one more sale in and you know it's a constant thing of like uplifting and keeping each other going and sometimes when you're around the right people and you see them hustling and grinding it inspires you to hustle and grind a little bit more and you kind of get yeah. like con tips or you see how somebody set up their sign and you could be like oh i could try that next time and you kind of get to compare (laughs) notes it's all about growing and it's all about helping each other um and i mean some people do view it as competition for sure because it's like they're trying to get every you know passerby's buck at a certain point but a lot of people are just Mm -hmm. like i need to get my my stuff out there and that's what's important and you know however else we can help balance that out that's what comes from you know that's what's best for everybody and so, mm-hmm. you know, you're mm-hmm. working through Husk and you, you're you working on thumbnails of issue three right now. Yes. How are you planning out everything from a, like a storytelling perspective? Are you thinking of a larger overarching series that you want to do? Is it like, a, are, do you have like a closing point and you want to move on to a new project? What's like your future outlook on this and your next project possibly? Yes. So it it was originally written as a graphic novel that I just broke into issues mm. as more attainable milestones where I can get pieces of the story out there. So nice. I do have a definitive end that the story is moving towards. Cool. And because, um, you know, after as, as I'm working on on this story, um, I do have other stories that have been on the back burner for a while mm. that I would love to get to. Um, and with those stories, um, now that I know, like, oh, now that I've built, like, a, an indie comic community, like, I can be better prepared to actually possibly put together a team one day. Um, and, and like, I'm already talking to a friend right now about uh, one story that if, if, if time <laughs> on my end allows, um, I might be able to, like, start working on it um in the background after issue four of husk is done but i currently the way that i have everything laid out husk will be 12 issues and then it'll be um again like depending on if the fates smile upon me or not um i would love to be able to at least compile four issues at a time into different volumes into uh, trade paperbacks. And then at the end of it, fingers crossed, maybe a full compilation of the entire graphic novel. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And I love that like breakaway pro uh, aspect too. I was just talking about it with some creators recently is that like, especially with indie books, it's, um, you know, you have a, a lot of us have like long-term projects. Like I have, you know, two like six issue series in mind. I have a friend who have like a seven issue series that they're working towards and they're already on Starside actually comics. We just interviewed them. They're on, they're entering their seventh issue of their series. Um, my friend Doug from cross Eye comics this weekend, uh, has a book. It's only about two or three issues, but he already put it into a trade. Um, and then I'm seeing other people do like, you know, their first three issues they might put into a trade. And I think that's really smart as an indie creator, because like, you know, when you're tabling and it takes a while to table and people start buying your work over time, to me, it seems kind of smart to be like, okay, I'm going to put out issue one, two, and three. That's essentially an arc. But once you start going past those further issues, I feel like it's almost harder to sell everything because then you're trying to sell everyone on issues one through five, and then maybe six is going to be the trade. And so you're having to catch them up, but catching them up in a batch with like the timeframes we work with, because it might take, I mean, you're on issue three right now that you're wrapping Mm -hmm. up and or just starting actually and i mean you've been at this for what four two i mean three or four years now i would say like working on your book yeah it's been off and on yeah, yeah. i mean in, in total um like i like i started in 2021 but there was a, a long hiatus i had to take yeah um the majority of 2022 um for health reasons Oh yeah. Um, See, so, so, there so was much like can a pop up there. in that time. Yeah. So I mean, like com- yeah. putting it together under the fourth volume on fourth issue, I feel like that really does catch up all your new fans instead of having mm-hmm. to like go, Oh, I have to, I'm missing issue three and four is already out or whatever hiccup may happen. You know what I mean? Whenever they see you at tabling or online, like I think, compiling your stuff in those chunks makes it a little bit better for like your audience to like digest your work a little bit. So I love how you're already kind of pre-planning on your model of, you know, you kind of think of an audience standpoint as well. And just for you, I mean, at least if you did four issues, you could pause for a little bit, work on a second project and then feel comfortable diving back into it as a new art kind of begins too. Yeah, absolutely. And I have had people come up to like my table at LA Comic Con who are asking for the trades. Like they they would see the artwork on the like the the front cover of issue one, and they'd ask like, "Oh, do you have a trade available?" And I'm like, "Ah, sorry, just the one issue for now." <laughs> um, and I totally respect that because even as a as a consumer myself, as a reader myself, like I love trades. I love sure. um, the the simplif not simplification, but I like having just the one book to keep track of. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of comic enthusiasts might judge me for this, but I do have single issues here and there, but I, I would really like, I get filled with so much anxiety when I see like, Oh, there's a new storyline, but I've missed the first four or five issues. Do I spend the time to go get back issues or do I just buy the trade that's right here and I can catch right. up right then and there. Um, and also from a printing standpoint, logistically, it would be, it saves me so more, it saves me from like the headaches of like keeping track how much of issues two through five or six do I have mm-hmm. on hand? Do I need to print more? Um, all of this that I'm doing, I, I print out of pocket or print, I pay for my prints out of pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to like one day if i do do a trade i'd like to be able to get it done through a kickstarter so i can have you know at least two three hundred copies on hand and be set you know for a couple of years um you know but uh yeah that would be better than trying to keep track of like four separate issues and and how much do i have of each and am i going to be Am I going to run out at any particular mm-hmm. convention? Is someone going to come up who's a new reader and I just sold out of like issue two, but I have one, three and four. Yeah. I wouldn't blame them if they're like, ah, actually I'm going to move on. Like, you know, yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. blame them. Exactly. You know, I, I met a creator this weekend that was just like, you know, what, on Saturday, they're like, you know, what, I'm not even going to pop back in tomorrow. I have one more copy of issue one and it just doesn't make sense for me to like come back without an, an issue one, but I have two and three with me. So I, he felt like he was already excluding his audience from the start and like putting a pause on things. And I was like, you know what? That makes sense. Like if, mm-hmm. if that's how your things are formatted, you are kind of losing out. It's good that he did sell, you know, that last copy of issue one, I was so hyped to hear that and he felt comfortable dipping out, but uh, it's one of those issues like, 
pertaining to like your inventory because you have to hook a person so quickly at a table or you know a comic mm -hmm. book shop that you're kind of passing by and you know having just something quick and easy and accessible just is so much better for people and it's probably easier just to make that sale when you are tabling at that point too just being like it's everything's collected right here and if you're a, a big fan by all means get the single issues that's great but just getting them all in one spot i feel like that's pristine and a lot better and it gives you more variety too you know plus mm -hmm. if you're packing up for a con and traveling maybe instead of taking all the single issues yeah, yeah just take like the <laughs> trades and some extra stuff and just hustle that because i mean you know the life of you know just selling the single number one issue so you mm -hmm. kind of know like okay i just got to push the trade it's everything together it seems smarter mm -hmm. and maybe a handful of copies of each other one and not mm -hmm. really having to deal with that um that's so cool and i mean it sounds like you know you wanting to collaborate with others is like you also being open as an artist um Bring your car.